Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Reversing Hashimoto's. I am your show host, Dr. Anshul Gupta, world's Hashimoto's expert. I help people reverse their Hashimoto's through functional medicine. And today I have the honor of having a great friend of mine on the show, Dr. Farah Sultan. Uh, she is a great family physician with functional medicine as her expertise, especially in hormone rebalancing. And as we know, Hashimoto's and thyroid is all about hormones. But today we are very excited to talk about her mandala method that she helps people go through that to help re rebalance her hormones. And then the interesting part is that she uh, herself had Hashimoto's disease and she was able to get rid of it. So we're going to talk all about that. But let me first introduce her formally before we jump into all that great discussion. So Dr. Farah Sultan is a board certified family physician and a functional medicine expert, award-winning international speaker and author. She is the founder of the Mandala Method and Vital Lego Wellness Center and helps women sleep when going through perimenopause and menopause. She lives with her husband and three kids. She loves to travel the world, garden, and biohack. Welcome, Dr. Sultan, over here. Thank you, Anshul. So happy to be here and to be part of your great podcast. Absolutely. So as you were discussing before, you know, like uh, you yourself went through Hashimoto's and being a family physician, you know, the today, like, you know, the conventional side of it. And now being a functional medicine physician, you know, the other side of it. So tell us your journey, how you were able to uh, conquer Hashimoto's. Thank you. I'd love to share that. So uh, growing up, I always had issues with uh, gut. I, I grew up in India and I would have, uh, you know, upset tummy and um, I had parasitic infections and lots and lots of antibiotics for sore throat and tonsillitis. And of course, I ignored it and I was diagnosed with IBS and I thought that was part of my life. And then fast forward, I uh, moved to the United States and got married, did my residency. And when I was pregnant with my first baby, I ended up having an emergency C-section. And that just set a cascade or a nightmare of events that led to a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, which really wasn't diagnosed for a very long time. And I was having classic symptoms that so many women go through. And so I had brain fog, lack of sleep, fatigue, hair loss, dry skin, uh, upset tummies, and weight gain, loss of libido, so many things, and postpartum blues. And I just couldn't figure it out. So I went for help to my regular doctor, my OBGYN, and they literally blew me off and said everything was fine. And of course, hindsight is 2020. When I look at those labs today, I was literally teetering on the edge of gross hypothyroidism, but my numbers were literally hanging on the edge of a cliff and nothing was done or said about it. So what, through my research, um, I found functional medicine and it was literally transformative because I didn't even know that gut health was linked to hormone health, to autoimmune problems. And so I really dove deep and I got trained and educated and mentored. And I did testing using myself as a guinea pig. I did all the functional medicine testing and discovered that I had immense food sensitivities. I had underlying uh, infections, toxins, um, and so stressors, of course, being a resident. And it was years later that I, I can truly say that I have completely reversed my Hashimoto's and I no longer have autoantibodies. And that's why it was such an awakening. As you know, I'm sure they do not teach us this in med school. And so now with my transformative journey uh, from being diagnosed with Hashimoto's and having all the classic symptoms, I have completely recovered from that. So now I, it is my true passion to help other women who are going through similar issues. Awesome. I will like a moment over here to repeat the sentence where you said that it is possible to reverse your Hashimoto's disease. 
because as you said in med school or even people who are going to the regular endocrine doctors today also they are being told that your antibodies are never going to go away they are going to get worse you'll be on this medicine forever if you have these symptoms maybe see a psychiatrist so all of those people listening over here Dr. Sultan told you that it is possible to reverse it, right? So please follow functional medicine ways to recover your Hashimoto's disease. So very, very powerful story, you know, like giving hope to, I will say, millions of people who are suffering from thyroid and Hashimoto's world over that they can take their health in their hands and get better. Absolutely. So tell us like, you know, what were the keys that, you know, that you thought, you know, were like very key players in healing your Hashimoto's disease or in general, what you have seen in your practice? Absolutely. So one of the major things I found that I had a huge sensitivity to gluten and it was really the cause or one of the causes of my IBS that I had suffered with all my life. And I just was told, oh, this is not ever going to go away and you can just treat the symptoms. So avoiding that, and I did not have actually got a celiac because I got tested for it, but I had non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Uh, and even today, uh, I'm very sensitive to it if even accidentally I get exposed to it. Um, so that was huge. But even some other foods that people might think are healthy or I thought were healthy, like dairy and almonds were actually problematic for me. And then the other issue that I found was really key in turning things around was really repairing the gut lining. So I did testing and I had dysbiosis, which is unfriendly microbiome and bacteria in the gut lining. I did have underlying um, infections like yeast infection, as well as because I used to be a sugar junkie, <laughs> but no longer. And I also had uh, some parasitic infections and you can get them right here in the United States. And, and of course, I grew up in India, so I was very familiar with those. But uh, treating those underlying problems was huge. Uh, just detoxing my makeup, my personal care products, my cleaning products, I felt was huge because uh, I did do genetic testing and I am predisposed to autoimmunity as so that is one of the keys which a lot of people with Hashimoto's have that you are more likely to be sensitive to gluten, you are more likely to get autoimmune issues. And so knowing that was very empowering because there are even though you cannot change your genes that you inherit what you can do is through lifestyle through this um, fascinating field of epigenetics we can alter the expression of our genes through our lifestyle and those were some changes I was able to make because I also had something like estrogen dominance. And so that was impacting even my cycles, for example. So everything is interconnected. Your gut health, your immune health, because 80% of the immune system lies in the lining of the gut, your nutrition, the kind of bacteria, the microbiome, but even liver and gallbladder. So many women have had their gallbladder removed and that can impact their estrogen levels and their gut function and thyroid. So it's like your body is in crosstalk. It's not in silos that we are used to doing in conventional medicine, where you see the endocrinologist and the gynecologist or um, the gastroenterologist, it's all interconnected. And so that uh, I do have genes like the MDHFR, MDRR, COMT, which influenced my hormones, my liver, my detox abilities that I was able to support through nutrition and supplementation and stress management. You know, residency is one of the most stressful times of your life. No sleep. You're going um, on caffeine and no sleep. So just kind of getting to the basics, do a self-care. It doesn't have to be a whole hour or two. It can be literally a little bit of time and just being mindful about stress and sleep and just prioritizing your health, which a lot of women 
the age that they get Hashimoto's is the age they also have babies. And so babies keep you up at night. And so it's difficult and you're launching in your career. So it can be a very hard time in terms of stress management and sleep to balance everything. And so just kind of giving grace to yourself and taking a little time and getting all the support you can from your family, from your friends, from your coworkers can be such a huge difference maker. So those, I think my gut health, my foods and my stress management and hormone balancing were the keys to reversing my Hashimoto's. Absolutely. So I think, you know, like what you're telling us over here is a process, you know, it's not okay, one short thing, you just do one particular thing, and the Hashimoto's gets better. It's working on all of the root causes. And then you know, like your body starts functioning better and your immune system starts functioning good, right? Absolutely, you cannot do an overnight fix. And it's not like one silver bullet. It's all of that, right? Absolutely. And I think in like, you know, a lot of people uh, who have been like searching things on the internet or like other places, they have picked up at least a nutrition piece from majority of the places and they're working on the gluten free diet or they are working on a healthier diet. But I think some of the other lifestyle factors, people don't pay as much attention. Like one of the lifestyle factors you talked about was sleep right? Mm -hmm. like everybody knows, yes, sleep is important. But now we know that, you know, it's so many other variables to the sleep, right? It's not only about the duration. It is about the time you're going to bed. It is also about the quality of the sleep, which sleeps like in you are following in things. So share a little bit more about, you know, is there any connection between sleep and hormones or Hashimoto's? And absolutely. So sleep is, uh, as you know, a restorative function where you do repair work. So and Hashimoto's itself is a state of inflammation because your own immune system is attacking your own thyroid and every cell in your body has a receptor for thyroid. So the time to really do some restorative work, cleaning up operations, if you will, just like um, the analogy I give is the street sweepers that come at the end of the day and clean out the streets, your body is literally doing cleanup operations at night when you sleep and your circadian rhythm is so important to honor it because we live busy lives we are overworked over scheduled and prioritizing sleep can become an issue and then uh, the window of time we devote to rest and restoration when it is uh, deprived when there's sleep deprivation it can certainly impact other hormones too, not only your thyroid in your adrenal and you know the adrenal gut thyroid connection. So if your adrenals are off, then how can you heal from Hashimoto's or any autoimmune condition for that matter? So your insulin, which is your blood sugar levels are also uh, kind of balanced when you sleep well. And so when you have a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep, or oversleeping, like you sleep for 10, 12 hours and you're still tired, that's called hypersomnia. Those are all not normal and they can influence other hormones like your insulin and cortisol, as well as your thyroid and cause this complex interplay, which then affects your metabolism, your energy, your focus, your productivity, and even lead to weight gain or metabolic syndrome, or risk for cardiovascular illness like years down the road. And that's why really, like you mentioned, the time you go to bed, the time you wake up, or really good sleep starts from the moment you wake up, when you go out in the sun, because we live indoors, or do grounding, or uh, just movement. Moving your body will help you sleep better at night or having a bedtime routine. And it doesn't have to be some complex routine which is stressing you out, but it can be simple things that can help you sleep without the use of drugs and medications that are addictive and have side effects. Absolutely. So I just want to kind of touch base uh, going back where you said that sleep deprivation can lead to weight gain or a metabolic syndrome, right? So people 
interestingly, cannot put these two together, right? How can my sleep cause be the reason that I'm not able to lose weight or gain weight? Because this is a very major problem with Hashimoto's clients. And again, all of them are going on a low calorie diet or all of them like you know, are exercising crazy, but they're not working on the sleep aspect. So just shed a little bit more light about sleep deprivation and weight gain. Yes. So when there is sleep deprivation, imagine if you wake up after a bad night's sleep uh, or you haven't slept that well, you know the food choices that you might make may not be the best. You are going to reach more for your comfort foods and be hangry uh, rather than uh, eat something more healthy. And also, I know intermittent fasting is very popular, but if you already have a high cortisol level and then you drink coffee to uh, kind of fast through the day on an empty stomach, and like you said, if you're calorie restricting yourself, you're really not getting the nutrients your body needs to heal, and that can further actually make matters worse in terms of your cortisol. And so it's not always necessarily that I'm super stressed out, that's why my cortisol is off. Inflammation can affect your cortisol. Hashimoto's itself is a state of inflammation that can impact your cortisol. Cortisol itself can then impact sleep and it becomes a vicious cycle. But cortisol also influences hormones like insulin. And when you have insulin resistance, you know that setting the stage for weight gain, especially visceral fat, belly fat, and fatigue, and a lowered rate of metabolism and lowered energy. So as it is, you have low energy with Hashimoto's and now your sugars are dysregulated. You're not sleeping because when insulin is high, it drops your sugar too low and then your brain doesn't like it and it'll wake you up in the middle of the night. So dysregulated blood sugar levels are a huge cause of insomnia. And then that sets up another vicious cycle of the body trying to compensate and storing more fat because your pituitary and hypothalamus glands, they sense that there's a lack of energy. So we need to store more energy because they are the regulators, the thermostats in your body. And then you end up storing for more energy. The body's best way to store more energy is belly fat. And so that's the deeper visceral fat, which is stubborn and harder to get rid of despite diet and exercise. So you may be working out in the gym an hour or two every day, and it'll be really hard to lose that weight because that's not the cause for the weight gain. The cause for the weight gain is metabolic and metabolism is affected by restorative sleep because it makes your hormones go awry and then that causes further weight gain. So the good news is you can disrupt this cycle by really just some mindfulness and it doesn't take a whole lot to sleep. It may not, like you said, happen overnight, but it can be done. You can get restorative deep REM sleep, which is a hallmark um, of uh, really the uh, restorative function that happens with your glymphatic system. So the old view was that the blood brain barrier completely seals off the brain. But now we know that your vagus nerve, your parasympathetic system, which is your rest and digest system, is really the direct connection between the brain, the gut, and the immune system, and therefore the hormone connection. And that's why sleep can influence a lot of other functions, including weight gain and metabolism, because over-exercising is a thing where you are overstimulating your cortisol and that can truly impact sleep and then that can impact your weight. So it's really all interconnected, but you can break this vicious cycle. Absolutely. Thank you for explaining it in such a detail uh, about how complex, you know, like the whole situation about sleep and, you know, all this hormonal cascade. 
So if you have to give like you know, your top tips to people to improve their sleep, which you feel, okay, that has worked best for your patients, what will those be? Uh, so light plays a big role. Get out in the sun in the morning uh, before 10 a.m. ideally for at least 10 to 20 minutes and grounding has a big effect. But at night, make sure that the room is dark because um, that can help your own serotonin and melatonin naturally. The other thing is to make sure that you're not exposed to blue light because that's very stimulating to your brain. So simple things like dimming the lights an hour or two before bedtime and maybe even wearing blue light blockers or using screen blue light blockers on your devices because we can't help it. We're um, on our phones or devices even in the evenings. Um, also, just going to bed and waking up at the same time is something your body likes you for it'll thank you for it so having a routine and not like on a weekend going crazy and then trying to expect that your body will just go back to its normal rhythm uh, from Monday to Thursday and that's why having a regular routine for going to bed and waking up is something that helps your sleep. The other thing is that we have a lot of toxins. Actually, our bedrooms can be very toxic. The mattresses, the bed sheets, uh, the um, environment. So just making sure that your bedroom is free of clutter and that uh, the lighting is right, the temperature is right. The low temperature, when your core temperature falls, you sleep much better. And that can be done uh, in various ways. And uh, even a warm shower just before bed will actually drop your body temperature, which will actually help you sleep better. And making sure nutritionally that you're getting enough of good fats and proteins and fiber and good starches and trying to eat maybe a couple of hours before bedtime so that your body can take a rest in the true sense. These are some very, very easy, simple things that you can do to restore sleep and having some sort of a wind down routine, whatever is your thing that you enjoy just before bedtime. Absolutely. I think those are like great tips and tricks that people can use. I think I like that, you know, they are so simple that, you know, each and every person can make it as a part of their routine. Because, you know, like unless it becomes a part of your routine, they might work for a very short amount of time and then we fall back into the same things. So very mm -hmm. important is that, you know, like, you know, see out of all of these things that are mentioned over here, which few things work for you and you can make it the part of your life. I think that will give you the long term good quality sleep. Now, I want to actually touch base on this mandala method, you know, uh, that I'm very curious about that you have created. Um, to give like, you know, hormone rebalancing uh, techniques to people with Hashimoto's and obviously women with perimenopause and menopause. So share a little bit more about this mandala method. What is that? So um, I devised the mandala method really based on my own journey and really everything in our body, like we just discussed, is all interconnected. And that's what it is about, that everything in the universe is interconnected. So the five pillars or circles that are interconnected are your nutrition, which you know is key. And again, there are so many diets out there. It is just eating nutrient dense foods. Don't go on a fad diet because your body again does not appreciate that. The second pillar is really gut balance, supporting gut, immune, liver, gallbladder, microbiome health. Uh, balancing gut health is really key to healing. The third is balancing your hormones. And by hormones, I mean your thyroid, your sex hormones, insulin, cortisol, your leptin and ghrelin, which are your hunger and satiety hormones, your adrenal hormones control your salt water balance, or even nutrients like vitamin D are like a hormone vitamin, not simply a vitamin. So looking at the full picture of balancing all of these hormones. And really when we balance the gut and the hormones, our brain can function better, which is the mind-body balance. Um, the stressors will always be there, but how can we get the better of stress rather than the stress get better of us in a natural way? And 
the fifth is movement and activity. You don't have to work out for hours to do that. Anything you enjoy is good. And then the central piece connecting these five pieces is empowerment, education, staying curious, learning, because uh, like they say, if you give a man a fish, you give him dinner for the night, you teach him how to fish, he can feed his entire village for the rest of his life. And so learning rather than just doing things haphazardly or just following some random pro protocol may not work, but you're all smart, intelligent people. When you have an understanding of your own body, then it helps you to understand. And I'm a big fan of data and I love linking data with education, your own labs. And that's why then you're not guessing, you're testing your own labs and that can be transformative. So that's the mandala method. Are there like different steps that you take, you know, or in this mandala method, or you just start from wherever a person is? How does that approach work? Yeah. So yeah, we do do it in a step-by-step -step manner. So we really begin first with um, an assessment, which is in-depth. Uh, we do recommend lab testing and then really start with food first as medicine. So introducing foods that are healing to the body, but taking out a few inflammatory foods like refined processed GMO foods, including gluten, dairy, sugar, artificial sweeteners, things like that. And then um, really helping support the gut health is the next step, so sort of ease into it, where you are, uh, you may be adding a few shakes and supplements for a limited time to really help the gut repair itself. And normally the gut does it on itself, but we're just giving it some extra support. And then by which time the labs are all back, we look at that and balance those uh, things like insulin, cortisol, leptin can really be done without the use of any medication. And I do believe in bioidentical hormones in the right stages of perimenopause and menopause. Not every woman needs hormones. And there are, uh, but if they are needed, we can get those tailor made. For them and then will come when you feel better when you're tired uh, when you are in pain when you are not seeing results it's not very motivating to be very active but just breathing and meditating and uh, walking initially or yoga and then you can step up your level of movement as you see results and feel better and then interlacing the education throughout the whole process in a curriculum based approach is how we do it in a step by step manner awesome i love it you know like you know how you are starting from the basics of you know first fixing the lifestyle because that is the base of any healing process and then taking it from there you know by individualizing the program by looking at the labs uh, i'm sure you're doing a lot of advanced testing to looking at yes. what is happening inside their body, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I love it when I see the data, but when I can help them see that, see, this is why you're feeling this way. And this is what you can do about it. So it's not like uh, you have to suffer uh, needlessly and not be told that everything's fine. And here's another pill and come back in three months or six months or one year. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's also the interesting piece that you know, a lot of people come to see us also and they said, well, I feel perfectly fine. I don't know. I have this Hashimoto's. And then, you know, we talk about these advanced tests where you might have some deficiencies or some toxins and they feel, well, these tests might not show anything because I feel perfectly fine. Right. Mm -hmm. But yes. even though they are feeling fine, they still can have a gut infection. Even though they are feeling fine, they can have a toxin. Right. Is that also what you feel and see? Absolutely. So um, initially, you may not feel bad, which is good. But only when you look at the labs, you can see, oh, wow, I'm so inflamed, I'm on fire. <laughs> and then you can do something about it. Absolutely. I feel that, you know, until you know what you're dealing with, you cannot create this whole plan that will fix you completely. You know, and people have exactly. been doing bits and pieces here and there, and they do feel good after doing it, but they do not feel completely better until you address all of the root causes. Is that what you see also? 
Absolutely. So you really have to treat, uh, be treated as a whole person and connect all those dots together and connect it with your individual data. Yes. Absolutely. I love it that you're doing such a great work, you know, in kind of creating this method and helping so many women, you know, with all of those hormonal dysfunctions. And the biggest is that you're giving hope to each and every woman who is out there having these issues who have been told that nothing can be done. You know, there is mm -hmm. no thing which will help them to lower their antibodies. This is no thing that can help them to rebalance the hormones. Or they have been totally to said that, okay, well, your hormones are going to be this way. There is no place for bioidentical hormones. So I'm sure you're taking care of all of those things and helping so many women. Yes, so absolutely never lose hope. And really, I say we're not the healers, you and I, the body is the healer. What really we're doing is giving their body the support that it was missing and lacking and taking away the toxins and imbalances that were interfering with its normal functioning. So your body is capable of really healing itself. Just have trust in your body's ability to heal because some people have been feeling so bad for so long that they give up hope. But you don't have to do that. Absolutely. And in that aspect, I think you have giving our audience a free ebook, uh, which helps them with uh, steps to hormone rebalancing. So tell us more about that. So it is a free book where essentially by following simple recipes, grocery tips, and uh, really a nutrition guide, you can balance your hormones even with while you haven't done your labs, just eating uh, clean and loving your body and supporting it with good nutrition can help you balance your hormones. And so we'll provide you with the link to the book that you can download and use and see great results with. Absolutely. So please go to the description, you know, and you will see the link over there go it is free and it is really great with simple tips that will help you to rebalance your hormones today so please go and download the ebook uh, along with that where can people find more about you and reach you out uh, so I'm on Instagram at uh, Farah Sultan MD, and my website is vitalogywellness.com which is v-i-t-a-l-o-g-y wellness.com Absolutely. Again, all of these links will be in the description. So please check out those links. She has so many resources, masterclass, as well as like, you know, so many downloadable things. So you will love all that stuff that will transform your life. So please go and download uh, all those uh, links and things. Thank you so much. We can keep going whole day about what things we can do about rebalancing the hormones. But I think this is the end for now. Any parting words you have for our audience? Uh, well, just uh, trust in your body's ability to heal itself and uh, give it what it loves and you will see transformation. Um, so uh, just have faith in yourself. And so glad to have been on this podcast with you, Anshul. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It was really a pleasure having you over here. Uh, so thank you so much for coming over here and sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This is it for today. We will see you again later. Bye-bye.